So um, what we're going to try to get going here is a, it's a bit of an interactive session. We're, we're really not intended to try and do something from, anything like sales pitches. Um, what we've got here is uh, a group of all the people um, uh, able to come and talk today from the Sailing Software Alliance. Now, th th this alliance is a grouping of the of name, names that you'll be probably familiar with, a lot of them, probably not all. Um, those in bold there are the people who are here here tonight, and those are all the logos. Quite, quite, quite a big group you see now. And we've all got together because we can see that this is a pretty fragmented market, and the more we can do to put it together and work together, the more likely we are to get, uh, get good penetration of, of software into sailing. We're all sailors, we're all keen on sailing. I was just having a, a side conversation uh, along the lines of how on earth do you do all this software for the, for the money you charge? And of course it's because partly it's a passion for us. You know, it's, it's, it's been sort of a, a, a side career for, for most of us. Um, and, uh, and it's our interest in sailing that motivates us to, to try and offer the software at a price that realistic sailing clubs can afford. Um, probably worth a few introductions here, we, 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 we can go around the table, but, but I'll, to speed it maybe I'll introduce the presenters. So uh, in the list there from Sail Race we've got Simon Lovesey here, okay. um, from Sail Wave, John Estelle, from Sailing Club Manager, our first travel, Jeremy Pocock, from Sailing Club Software, myself and, uh, and Mike, Mike will be talking around the Medusa system that uh, some of you use. Um, and the others there, not, not with us tonight, but, uh, but, but all interested in, uh, in, in, the, in the progress we, we make. So maybe we can go around the table, perhaps starting here, just a name and, and club you're from, perhaps. Can you make a follow-up and do some for Graffin as well? Very good. Can you note these down for me, Mike, while I'm standing up here, sorry. Okay, Simon King from Hollowell Sailing Club. Race results officer, sail wave user, and obviously uh, involved in reporting E-wise to the other way and well, using their system. Very good. I'm Clive, also from Harlow. I'm um, in charge of all the um, training and the principal. Thanks, yeah. Tim Matthews, Banbury Sailing Club, uh, Sail Wave and Duty Man. Very good. Duncan Sign, Banbury Sailing Club, too. Dave Holyoke, Hollow Sailing Club. I'm the one who pieces the PC with me. Oh, very good. <laughs> 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 you must neglect the hardware. I'm failing at the moment. Julian from Great Wall, Sailing Club, just south of Buckingham. Uh, I'm hopefully taking over membership from Lee. I'm going to see in a minute. Okay, very good. I'm Nicola Wilkinson, I'm the Commodore at Cobble Sailing Club. Thank you. Um, Elaine Coulton, I'm membership secretary here at Cobble. Nikki Frost, Stage Base Administrator. Hello. Sylvia Dawson, Commodore of BMW. Lee Stevenson, Vice Commodore, Great Wall Sailing Club. Um, I'm Duncan Trustwell, I'm the uh, Manager of the Sport Development Department of the Royal Yachting Association. Mm -hmm. I'm Graham, Graham Smith from Hollowell Sailing Club, and in the last 12 months I've been to 47 different sailing clubs for one reason or another. Oh, <laughs> I, bet, I bet Duncan could beat that, but <laughs> it was all for the same reason. Not as many as I'd like now. Uh, John Foster, I'm at the old way, and I work for Duncan. That's great, that's great. Okay, thanks everyone. So just to, to, to open the... Um, the session here, if I can make the technology work. This, this slide, really, the message of this slide is that, that we're not the lunatic fringe anymore. You know, a few years ago when we started doing this, there were a few clubs who maybe went for some software. This is really spreading. Now those dots actually, or I could compile in the, in the time available, they're the duty man users. It's probably the, one of the highest penetration pieces of selling software. But you can see it's a pretty good cover. There's actually 200 dots there. Um, there are about another 50 duty man users at either who aren't sailing clubs or, or who aren't in the UK. There's a few in the Republic of Ireland we could have put on there. But anyway, that's the, that's the UK picture. And you'll see that, you know, you can see the, the concentrations in here. You're obviously on the south coast, the east coast, the group of group middle here. But really, it's, it's pretty widespread. So, so we're not talking about something that's off the edges of reality here. This is what this is what clubs want. They're voting with their feet, and it's very important that we keep those systems lined up so they are actually what you need. That you don't don't, don't drift off um, and be hobbyists. You want to be focused on our market. And obviously, this year the hot topic about about uh, fit is participation. 
Um, that's what we're really all trying to do. Um, at our home sailing clubs, we see the struggles that they're having keeping keeping membership up, keeping people out on the water. Um, in, interesting in my home down on Haley Island, not so much membership, but it's actually getting people sailing to the issue. There's lots of members, very jolly in the bar, but maybe not so many sailing as used to in the terms of age group moving. So that's what that's what we're here to do is to is to see if we can uh, if we can work out how to use our existing systems as they stand at the moment, so you get a quick win, existing systems that you're using now to, uh, to gather data and measure participation. Because you can't measure, manage anything until you can measure it. Um, we've also got a particular need for your returns to the RYA and through them to UK Sport, which is where a lot of our money comes from. So that's all very well. And then looking a bit in the future, can we gather a few directions that the developers here can use to, to set our direct development paths to make sure we put the right features in the systems? to make it easier for you to encourage participation so you've got the tools that you need. And we've divided the, uh, the uh, evening up into a number of sessions. We'll, we'll look first at uh, admin efficiency and Mike and uh, Jeremy will talk to you there with the background of the um, membership management systems. Then we've got something on data collection and indeed presentation which will be Simon and John, um, result, result systems feeding into data collection. Um, then I'll talk again about member experience, so we can move, improve the member experience and uh, make it better for those members and sailors. Jeremy will come back in there and give some uh, more insight into there. And then any remaining time we've got, free discussion. But what, what, what I would say, what I would like to do is, is keep the discussion going all the time. I don't want to sort of hold for questions at the end. Don't worry about disrupting it. If it means we have to rush a bit at the end, it doesn't matter. If there's lots of good stuff flowing, Mike and I between us will be scribbling it down and anyone else who can scribble stuff down and email it to us afterwards would be great. So let's try and make it very discussive. So with that, I think it's over to Mike. Ooh, right. And um, just a couple of charts here to go over a few points. Um, it's blindingly obvious what's on here and uh, you'll understand a lot of the problems, but just want to say what we're trying to do with our software and what we're trying to give to you as well single shared database. Um, one of the biggest problems with clubs around is that, um, or at least they have in the past, had lots of different things on different spreadsheets all over the place. And one of the things we've been able to do is to help them to bring all that together into a single database. Um, obviously it's got to be a secure database, but at least having a single secure database in the cloud gives access to uh, club officials and, we hope, members eventually as well. So that everybody's using the same data and the administrators of the club are not trying to chase different data all over the place and trying to keep it in line. Um, big advantage here for the club administrators, of course, is members can update, keep up to date their, their own data as much as possible. Hopefully that should save you time once you get them into the swing of doing it. And of course that leads to uh, hopefully accurate data leading to accurate reporting. Um, more and more clubs want reports out of their systems and people in the club want reports they want to get, get into data, the fleet captains want data, and they all want different data in different ways. And oh, you can only do that if you've got accurate data to uh, uh, give them in the first place. Big part of uh, what we do is the uh, allocation of duties based on members' skills, qualifications, availability, and everything else that they uh, may or may not tell you about. Um, these things can lead to more efficiency, we hope, within the clubs. If you don't have to spend all of your time allocating uh, duties only for the people to say can't do that date, can't do that date, or I'm not skilled to do that, and you have to go chasing around trying to uh, find replacements for them. I'm um, not quite sure uh, of those of you who are on duty man at the moment how you um, set off allocating duties at the beginning of the year, but most people now are tending to put up a blank roster on duty man and let people volunteer into the slots that they can do. We're finding from uh, most of our clubs now, we're getting something about 70 to 80 percent of the slots being filled by volunteers. Now that has big advantages in two ways. One, that if they volunteer for a slot, they're more likely to turn up. Still no guarantees, but they're more likely to. And if they can't, then they have a little bit of responsibility for chasing around and finding a swap. So uh, we find that um, helps a lot. And of course it means that uh, the duty allocator only has to then look after about 20% of the, the slots to be filled. Uh, so big advantages there. Excellent. Thank you John. Um, <clears throat> one of our big uh, drivers is targeted emails. 
um, and this is using email wherever we can to uh, communicate with the, the members but in a targeted way such that we can bring out from the database lists of those members that we want to target which might be uh, by fleet or by interest groups or whatever but uh, doing that in a controlled way can hopefully save the administrators of the club a lot of time. We're more and more um, working on the direct feeds to websites so that we give you access to the data uh, straight onto your website for uh, reporting or whatever you may want to do to your members. So getting that data out again from the accurate uh, data that we're all holding on the, uh, on the site. Emailing renewal, renewal package, not quite sure how many clubs still do it but uh, the club that I was involved in um, used to send out huge packages of paper used to have to go off to the printers then stuffed in envelopes and labels and everything else. Emailing those packages has saved a huge amount of effort in a lot of clubs and that's the way we're going. In fact we're going one step further than that now on to uh, <coughs> online renewals so you don't actually send out anything at all. What we hopefully uh, you'll be doing is to send out an email um, a mass email hopefully to uh, your members saying the renewal system is <coughs> now open on the system go in look at your data if you're happy with what you see send us the money <coughs> and then uh, that should save uh, the administrators a whole uh, track of time I'll just say where we are on that at the moment <coughs> we've been doing some uh, a lot of testing over the last few months it is just about ready to go we'll be shipping the um, 4.4 of the juicer this weekend which is the enabler for a lot of these things for the online renewals and the, um, the software the web Medusa web package which actually does it and allows the member to get in and uh, look at his data is actually there already it's waiting to be enabled club by club as they want to use it so it's actually there this weekend and we will be inviting um, one or two friendly clubs to um, They're all friendly, beta test that for us, the three I think know who they are, um, <coughs> during December and um, I'm sure we'll have some bugs in there that we'll have to iron out as we go but uh, it's looking pretty good at the moment. What that will do is enable the member to, um, this first pass is basically going to just be a simple, yeah I like what I see, I've got no changes, I want to pay the bill. It'll allow them to say I'm going to send you a cheque or I'm going to uh, give you a cash when I come down on the weekend, or I'm going to uh, do a bank transfer, or I'm going to do it through my PayPal account. So those three options will be there, but each of those will be enabled by the club. You don't have to give all those to the, um, the member. It's up to you what you allow him to do. And um, <coughs> he will then send a notifier, an automatic notifier will come to the membership secretary, uh, which will say that this has been done by the member, and the membership secretary will then need to go in in this first pass to have a little look to make sure they're happy with what the member is doing. So we're not allowing the member to do too much directly online because that was the um, stuff we found, we uh, sorry feedback we got from the recent survey we did that most clubs don't want to allow their members straight in there at the moment. They want to do it in a cautious sort of way. But uh, that would be a big enabler to. Uh, taking off some of the time that you put into the uh, administration of the club at the moment. Um, the other thing that this will allow is you to proactively manage those members who haven't yet renewed. Uh, you'll get great visibility from here of those who haven't yet done anything, so you can go targeting those members. You won't have to send mass emails out saying anything. You can go individually to people who haven't yet renewed. And of course it leads to this uh, thing at the bottom here which uh, hopefully we'll give the admin, the uh, members of the club, the officials, uh, better control of their business, which is what all, we're all looking to do. That's it for now. That's Mike. I think questions will come up later. Yeah, well, any, any, any questions for Mike before we move on to Jeremy? Probably worth just, um, just saying that that's all about efficiency. So the challenge for you guys, we may be saving you, you know, 100 hours throughout the year. How are you going to use those hours to encourage participation? That, that's, the, that's the challenge, uh, but we give you the tool. That's really my question. The Sailing Software Alliance, you mentioned a dozen or so bodies yeah. providing different software packages. And what the Alliance is doing is bringing those together so they will talk to each other, because you talked about Dutyman and Medusa doing 
<coughs> some of this efficiency things, but yeah. are they actually talking they to, each, talk other to each other? They talk to each other. Right. So, yeah. so that's basically what the Software Alliance is here to, to talk about, a package yes. of yeah. individual products. And, and how we packages. can make them talk okay. together better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, 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 yeah and, and how, how the people producing that software can work better together to give the solutions you want. Mm -hmm. It's a slightly tall order to have them all passing data between each other. We're doing work on that, and something I'll talk about in a little while, we'll give some examples. So that, but the idea is we want to work together to give you this range of solutions that allows you to, to do, do the job of getting people sailing. Could I ask, is it possible to set up like a course, like a dinghy level one course, and then get people to sign up for it and pay for it and assign yeah, duties to it? Yeah, I think Jeremy's talk might move in. Yes, that, I mean, that's, that is all that. possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In um, which software package would that be, sorry? <laughs> Well, you could, <laughs> you could certainly create and book courses in Duty Man, including putting people onto the courses. Yes. Um, the online payment system in Medusa would let you pay for that as a club product. Um, Jeremy will probably talk in detail about how his systems would allow you to book that kind of thing and sell it as a product. Yeah, I mean... So you've got quite a few choices, really. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm really going to reiterate what, what um, uh, has already been said, because... Um, we are an alliance of, of software providers. We also, in some ways, we compete. So, I mean, I'm, I, um, the product that uh, that we have is Home Club Manager, which actually um, does the same kind of things as um, Duty Man and Medusa, um, and um, you know, so could be considered a competitive product. But uh, what we're trying to do with the alliance really is just is to partly to educate clubs about the benefits of software. Um, so there's not so much a sort of competitive pitch about our particular products. We're, we're doing similar things. Um, but it's about you know, trying to um, uh, encourage the use of software um, because it's, it can be beneficial to all clubs. Um, so I mean, I've put a few slides together which are um, reiterating the points already made. But um, you know, the sailing club, um, run by volunteers in, in many cases, some, some clubs uh, have full-time staff. Um, in smaller clubs those volunteers will be doing a lot of the uh, administrative tasks um, and that takes up you know, their time. Um, so software can help them do those things more easily, more quickly, share the workload um, and it, you know, we're trying to encourage efficiency. So, you know, challenges, I don't know if anyone's got any other ideas about what the challenges are for clubs, but, you know, volunteers have less time to contribute, people having to work harder now to maintain their lifestyles, less time. Uh, members have greater expectations of systems, you know, um, people now are very used to using the web applications for doing stuff online, and you know, if their clubs don't provide systems that they're expect uh, it's a bit disappointing if you can't book online for example you can't uh, look things up quickly and easily um, some people are using databases that are growing with the club over time but perhaps not able to fulfill their requirements anymore um, costs are increasing obviously so you know if we can provide solutions that help to reduce cost or save money or give you more time to do things that will bring money in that's hopefully a good thing. Um, so, common requirements for things that need to be done in the club. There's, there's a few more um, things that you, you've got to keep on top of. And typically clubs uh, may have a number of different solutions for each of these different things. Like spreadsheets or um, email clients, different databases. We can try and bring all those things together into an integrated solution that will make it easier. And um, using software that's based in the cloud, for example, it allows people to access the same system from multiple places rather than having all on one PC in a corner of the club. Um, hopefully, that saves time for everybody. Um, so, the Alliance is a group of companies that are, are, are providing software. Especially software, um, we're targeting selling clubs, your clubs, class associations. Um, 
and because we're trying to be specialists in that area, hopefully we're doing the things that you need. And we just need to find out what else you do need. We haven't got it right yet. Um, cloud software so seems to be where everything's going now. Um, the benefits of doing stuff in the cloud is that you can access it from anywhere. So you can access it from home, you can access it, access it, access it from a, a laptop or a tablet or your phone. You're not tied to a PC in one location. Um, and you don't need to necessarily have someone maintaining hardware. <laughs> you know, because everyone can use their own from anywhere they are. You might get the same so, trying to illustrate here is that all of these functions are actually interconnected, and you know, a lot of the data is common to all of them. So, solutions that bring it all together make it easy to manage it all in one place, exchange data, um, use it only once, and um, save you time, make you more efficient. So, I mean, hopefully, this is the important bit, more time on the water. Thanks, Jeremy. Any, any, questions, any questions for, questions for, for yeah, for Jeremy or, or discussion from where we've got to at the moment? Because we're going to... So, on the question of integration, it, it strikes me that, so what we're seeing is, in order for clubs to retain their members, people need to be regularly using the services of the club and deriving value from their membership. Yeah. It, will we be able to get to the point where a, a club committee, for example, or a management committee, however they're structured, are getting feedback around, so say that the results system is talking to the membership system to say these people actually haven't, haven't used the services of the club in the last six months and therefore you can begin to identify who's at risk of not renewing their membership yeah. and then, then you're genuinely yeah. using it to help you manage. You've been a few minutes, so I might show you that. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've got a couple more slides coming later, but yes, I mean, yeah. the, the idea is, is that yeah, your member's data is in the same database that uh, is used for online bookings um, and that um, is the, the, the website should be, if you like, the public interface between your club management systems and your members and other members of the public who might be coming to the club to participate in an event. Um, so when they, uh, if a member for example could go to the club site and book online for an event, it was a training course, a social event or a, or a, or a race or a regatta, that information then is in the system so you can straight away see which of your members have participated you can um, use that to manage the racing or, or training. Um, you can invoice it directly from that because it's all in, in there straight away. Uh, you can produce the results and publish those out to the website so people can see how, um, yeah, uh, to build a history of their um, participation and their results and, and they can see that all online. So all in one system, website becomes a public interface and um, you're not, uh, it's, it's easy for <coughs> the people responsible for the administration and for the members and visitors to do all those things. Okay. It's interesting that, that, that I think, Graham, the first conversation we had, we talked about you, you were trying to put together a solution to measure when your members turn up here and what they do. And, um, and that, that was many months back now, but it was kind of the seed of thinking, let's let's start getting together and talking about this. And Mike and I were picking up that conversation in the car driving up, and we could see how really we are pretty much there now about how we can add a member record, which is how long, how often did he show up, what did he do, when was he last here, all that kind of stuff. And you can even link with things like the access control system or the, the till system if you've got it, to make the automatic input so that no one doesn't just have to actually have to key in. And because Jeremy's got some pretty wild ideas that might come out later about you know, if, if the member will have an app on his phone or even just register his phone with the club, then the club's Wi-Fi can see the phone arrived and knows the member's there and maybe an app can ask him what you're here for, you just for a drink or going sailing. And, and we can put all that into the membership database so it just gets populated. But, but also, yeah. simply by making it easier for people to register events, there's a better chance than doing it. And as you build a history of the sort of events they do, then you've got a, a information that helps you 
uh, market new events to them um, through email, through SMS, through the website. Yeah, just knowing what's going on helps, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have trouble working out whether the bar's open at my club sometimes, <laughs> despite the great websites. <laughs> uh, right, there might be a natural break here because of, uh, because of Simon's late arrival. Have you got slides on there or do you want me to pull think, them up onto we'll here? We'll put them on there because I might not so Have you got them with you? Well, the slides are here, but I'm not, you're not. Uh, uh, if the copy I got before you set off is the still yeah, current hasn't, copy. Hasn't changed. <laughs> so there, there'll be now be a short natural break, so where you can uh, we can well get enough. some discussion going, and I'll, and I'll move them into the. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>